I'm so excited for you if you are thinking about making your first online course. It can be really exciting, but also a little bit of a daunting journey. So in today's video, I wanna show you how to easily create your first online course in a way that you are assured it will sell. And I'm gonna show you also how to do it with Teachable, which is the software I use for hosting all of my courses. So are you ready? Hey Go-Getter, it's Salma Jafri from SalmaJafri.com and you are in the right place if you want to grow your personal brand with video, hit the red subscribe button, the bell icon, and let's begin. This is part of my Start Online Coaching series of videos that I'm doing every Friday. I'll link to the entire playlist right up here. So if you've missed an episode, you can go and catch up on that. Today we're talking about how to transition from online coaching to building an online course. So I'm gonna share with you how I actually eventually made my flagship course YouTube Launchpad, but I didn't start it off as a big, overwhelming project. What did I actually do? So because it's overwhelming to create a large course, I broke it down into three steps. So the first step was that I offered a part of my course as a done for you service. So one of my core modules that I wanted inside that course was on how to create a video content strategy and how to do a 90 day plan. So what I did was I offered a service that I will create your 90 day video content plan. And I think I priced it at $49 and I got um, 12 people to purchase that. And so I made their 90 day video content plan. So that was step one in validating that, okay, will people actually pay for something like this? Step number two was to make one part of the module or make a mini course. So I actually created a course on video content strategy and then I sold that. So first I did it for people, then I showed people how to do it themselves. And that became a mini course. And then the video content strategy became module two of what is now my existing course in a six module course. So it's six modules and module two is actually how to create your video content strategy. So I did it in steps. And what was really good about doing it in these three steps was it didn't overwhelm me. Like I didn't do all six modules right from the start. I started off really small and the other really uh, good thing that happened was that I got paid for it right away. So it wasn't something like I didn't spend a whole month, two months making a course and then wondering if it's even going to sell or not, but I was paid for the concepts I was coming up with and the teaching that I was doing. So I was earning as I was making the course. So, so I validated the course idea. I knew that it was going to sell. And the third thing that happened was that I got feedback from the people who took that course and who I made the done for you service for. I got feedback from them on how to improve it based on their questions. So the question that they asked, I incorporated and made it better. So that is how I would recommend for you to start as well. Figure out what you can offer as a mini course or as a done for you service so that you start earning immediately from your course idea and then people can buy the entire product, the, the full scale product, and you're not overwhelmed while you're creating it. Okay, so let's move on to part two of this training, which is how to actually record your course upload it using Teachable. So I'm gonna open my computer for this and I'm gonna go on to teachable.com. Now, a couple of things that I like about Teachable and why I chose it as a platform. So I did have a course up on Udemy before this and what happened was I was competing with a lot of other course creators, but using Teachable, I'm not in direct competition and I am um, more in control of how my course is priced and how it looks, and I'm not competing with everybody else. It's not a marketplace, right? So that's the basic difference between Teachable and Udemy. The other thing that I really like about Teachable is that it's super simple to get started. It is very non-techy. So even if you feel like you're not a very technical person, you can get started really easily. So here's how I create my courses. So what I like to do as the first step is I go to Keynote and I make a presentation. So I make slides of what I want to be teaching inside the course. And that is usually the first step. The second step is I usually open up software. For example, I would open up ScreenFlow. So what I would do is uh, record my audio while looking at the slides. And in the beginning, I used to think that I need to be the face like inside the course, but honestly, 
the course is really a transformative journey for my students, right? And so the real thing that I want them to do is be able to understand concepts and to show concepts. I need to be able to share my screen and show what's happening as I explain different things. So my face is not really necessary. So I might have that in the beginning, like in the introduction module or as a welcome message. But after that, I make it easy for myself by not having to get dressed up to actually shoot course modules. And I think that was a pressure I put on myself in the beginning. But I don't do that anymore. And it, I think it's a better experience for people taking the course as well. So you can use software such as ScreenFlow to record your voice while you're sharing your screen um, and um, uh, screencasting. Or you can use free software such as Zoom. Incidentally, I made a video on how to do all of this with Zoom, how to record your course modules. I'll link to that right up here. So you can go watch that after this video. You can also use software like Loom. You can use a paid software like Camtasia. And you can also, if you're using a MacBook, you have probably QuickTime built into MacBook. So you can use QuickTime to share your screen and record your screen um, as well. So these are all the different options that you have for recording course modules. So I do it really simply, no fancy equipment or anything. I just plug this, um, these earbuds into the MacBook and put this in my ears and that's all I use for audio. I will pad the room a little bit with cushions or mattresses or stuff so that it's not too echoey so that the audio quality is really good because people are listening into the course module as they're watching me teach something. Okay, so the next step in all of this is I wanna show you what the curriculum looks like and how I upload the file. So once I have narrated the audio in ScreenFlow, what I would do is go to save and then I would save this, uh, sorry, I would export this. So I, I would export it as an MP4 file. Okay, and then I would simply upload that MP4 file to Teachable. So let's go inside Teachable now. Um, so this is what the homepage looks like. And just really quickly, I'm on the basic plan. So it's $39 a month. But if I do an annual version of it, it'll be $29 a month. So you can figure out which one um, suits you. You can also get started for free. So you don't actually have to start paying right away. Uh, then the other thing, let me take you inside the admin area. So uh, this is what the curriculum for my YouTube Launchpad course looks like, right? So you can see that there are all of these files uploaded and there are all these sections that I've created. So it's like module, the first one, which is welcome, then module one, optimization and channel branding, module two, content strategy, and so on. Now, what you're going to notice here is that you can upload different types of files. You can upload MP4 files, you can upload audio only files, you can upload text files, you can upload just a link, you can upload image files. So all of those are options. And what I like to do is I like to make all my downloads at the end um, available as like a PDF. So at the end of every module, I have like a download module one checklist with screenshots and people can just download that as a PDF. So I really like how this works. And let me show you how you actually upload. So this is your dashboard. And here you can view your sales page as a visitor or your course curriculum. And what you do is just fill out all of these. So what's your course going to be called? Your bio, um, your subtitle, um, the URLs, all of that. Then I make a thumbnail inside Canva for the course. And then um, that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot of setup to do, right? And then you just basically upload your course curriculum. So when you're in curriculum, you go here and then you can choose to create a new section. And then this feature I really like, you can do bulk uploads. So if I've um, audio narrated and filmed maybe uh, six files within a module, right? So I will bulk upload all six together, which saves a lot of time. And the other thing I like is that once they're uploaded, you can move them around. So I can put this down here or put this back up there. <laughs> and um, you can sort of uh, just move whole sections around as well. So I can move the entire module one somewhere. Um, and I can I can just sort of structure it after uploading it. So I think that's uh, really easy. And then you can also edit your, uh, your file name. So they're not like um, alphanumeric file names, but it's actually descriptive of what is inside. And uh, Teachable has just started something new, which is that you can preview some of the files and you can make that available as a free preview to entice people to see your teaching style and what is inside the course. So if you go here, you can actually 
click this little button here and make certain sections of your course as a free preview. So that's something interesting that you can um, use to sell your course where you can make certain uh, files or certain modules as a free preview. Uh, the other thing is you can make certain things downloadable and you can also copy different lectures and duplicate them. So that's another time saving feature that you can use. Okay, for uh, coming into pricing. So what I like to do is have a one time price uh, for my course, but you can also do coupon codes for different uh, places that you might want to promote your course. So you can just go to coupons and you can make a new coupon either for this course or for all of your courses. And I think that coupons are a really great way, especially when you're launching a course. At first, you can offer a newbie discount or a beta user discount or whatever you want to do, right? And you can set the expiry of that coupon and you can also set how many people can use that particular coupon. So all of those options are available inside Teachable. Okay, and the other thing I want to point out is you can drip your course out if you want. Um, so I don't do this with my course because I want people to uh, be able to reference different modules and jump back and forth between sections but if you have a very linear course where people need to see one thing before they can move on so you can use the drip feature and you can actually uh, put a date or a time here of how many days should pass uh, before people have access to a certain module so this is something that you can do inside teachable as well all right, so let's talk about what's not so good with Teachable, right? So obviously every software has certain falls. And things that I don't particularly like about Teachable is that first of all, the payment is received next to next month. So any sales that I make in March, for example, will be paid out on the 1st of May. That is because of their 30 day refund policy. So they need that time frame to pass before they can make payouts. So, I mean, it's not something that I don't like. It's something I'm, I'm used to now, but it's something that you may not want. You may want to be paid immediately. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, the other thing is that because I'm on the basic plan, they do take transaction fees out of the revenue that you earn. So that is is deducted from whatever revenue that I earn. So if I make X amount, then I'm paying them $39 a month, but I'm also paying transaction fee. I can um, reduce that or take that out if I upgrade to the pro plan. So that's something to keep in mind as well when you're thinking about your costs and how much you need to be making and how much is being deducted. And the third thing is that their sales page is not uh, very good for um, like, like it's not a really good landing page, right? So what I do is I actually host the sales page for my course on my own website. And I will make a video on that in this series on how to host a sales page and how to host a page on your own website to sell your course, because I think that it converts a lot better. So if you wanna see that video, let me know in the poll up here. So my question for you today is, are you developing your first online course? And does this tutorial help walk you through a cool way on how you could not just develop it, but also sell it while you're developing your online course? Let me know in the comments below. So if you're ready to get started with building your online course, I'll put a link to Teachable in the description below. Go and check that out. And I'll also link all the videos that I mentioned in this particular series in the end card next to me so you can plan out your online coaching business and all the tools and tech that I use to build my online coaching business. Remember to go after what you want and build that brand you love because you can be the media. Bye.